All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk about parametric surfaces, which is a very neat way of describing surfaces. And what is this? It's literally the two-dimensional analog of parametric curves. And here's a cool thing. It's something you actually already know how to do. I just gotta make you believe in yourself. So today I will go over five examples of typical parametric surfaces. All right, so the first example is a cylinder x squared plus y squared equals four in R3. And what it looks like, it's just your regular cylinder in R3. And because the variable z is missing in this equation, it means that it's a cylinder in the z direction. So it looks something like that. Right. So x squared plus y squared equals 4. And the question is, how would you describe it usually? Well, usually you would just use cylindrical coordinates. So the way you do it, well, x, so the radius is 2, so x would just be 2 cosine theta. And then y would be 2 sine of theta. Because you see in the xy plane is just a circle, and then z is just this free variable that goes up and down. So z equals z. Now, it seems silly and it seems easy, but look, what you're really doing by using cylindrical coordinates is just describing this cylinder with two variables, namely the variable theta and the variable z. And this is what a parametric surface is. It's just describing a surface using two variables. And the cool thing is we can describe this more compactly as a vector. Namely, you can just write the vector 2 cosine theta, 2 sine theta, and z. And that is sort of a description vector, which we call r theta z. So let me write this more nicely. r theta z would be 2 cosine theta, 2 sine theta, and z. And that is what's called the parametric equation of this surface, which I would like you to compare to the parametric equation of the line, which would just be r of t equals something. Here we have two variables, which is a surface. And again, which we can depict here as just being r theta z. So as I said, it's something you know how to do, but we just write it in a different way. All right, next example. Next example, how about representing the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9, again, which looks something like that. This beautiful round sphere, and the question is, how would we usually represent the sphere? Well, spherical coordinates. If you thought the same thing, then I have to say it's very good. And what is spherical coordinates here? Well, here the radius is 3, so it's just rho equals 3, if you want, in your spherical coordinates. And I keep forgetting the, uh, you know, the representations, but here you basically get x equals 3 uh, sine phi cosine theta. So again, think r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, so 3 sine phi sine theta, and z equals 3 cosine phi. Now, uh, what is phi, what is theta? I know here mathematicians and physicists, they disagree, but here theta is simply the angle, okay, and then, uh, yeah, 
Uh, theta is the angle, again here from 0 to 2 pi, so the horizontal angle, and that's because there's a horizontal line, and phi is a vertical angle, because there's a vertical line, and therefore, again writing this more compactly, we can write this as a vector, r theta phi would just be 3 sine phi cosine theta comma 3 sine phi sine of theta and 3 cosine phi okay. and uh, and again that just represents a typical point on the sphere r theta phi and one thing that I do want to mention, I should have mentioned it for the first example as well, but for those parametric surfaces, it's very important to say where theta is and where phi is. So what is the range of values for theta? Well, theta, you could make a full revolution. So theta is between 0 and 2 pi. 2 pi. And phi, remember with the spherical coordinates, it goes from 0, the north pole, up to pi, which is the south pole. So don't forget when you use parametric surfaces to tell where the parameters lie in. So here from 0 to 2 pi, and here from 0 to pi. And, um, and this will be important once we do integration on surfaces, which I'm happy to talk about, and because those will be our you know, limits of integration. So again, a new topic today, but which is not that new, because as I said, you already know how to do this. Next one. All right, next one. What happens to graph of functions? It turns out in this case, the parametric equations are much easier. So for instance, what about z equals 1 plus x squared plus y squared over this little square in this case, 1 comma 2, 3 comma 4. So what this looks like, remember x squared plus y squared, it's this 3D parabola, so this paraboloid, and with this plus 1 you shift it up by one unit, so it looks something like that. But what we're saying is, we're just looking at it, under this little square. So you see this is 1 comma 2 and this is 3 comma 4. So kind of the base or the shadow of your surface is this little square and we're really just looking at this portion here. So we're just cutting up a little patch out of this parabola cake if you wish. And here's the cool thing. It's super easy to parameterize graphs of functions because, well, we give you z in terms of x. So just let x be x, y be y. Those are our two variables. And then z is in terms of x and y which ultimately just gives you the following parametrization, r comma x y is just x y and 1 plus x squared plus y squared. And remember again, put the bounds for x and y, so x is between 1 and 2, and y is between 3 and 4. So again, for functions, it's very easy to parametrize. You just let x be x, y be y, and your parametrizations are simply r comma x, y. And in particular, here's one important thing to know. Whatever we say about surfaces will also be true for graphs of functions. And in particular, for graphs of functions, formulas usually get simplified. So to reiterate, a graph of a function is a surface, but not all surfaces are graphs of functions. Like for instance, the sphere. The sphere is not the graph of a function because you see here, for instance, there are two values for the same value of x comma y. So parametric surfaces are slightly more general. 
And the next example is super interesting, so let's do it. So the next example, as I said, it's something you've seen before in calculus, but now we can do it using cool multivariable calculus. So remember when in single variable calculus you did volumes of you know, solids of revolution, so it turns out you can do the same thing in multivariable calculus. So take, for instance, the graph y equals 1 over x okay, between 1 and 2. Okay, and take this and rotate this portion about the x-axis. So you get this thing called uh, Gabriel's horn. I don't know if it's the 1 over x or the 1 over x squared. But anyway, you get this little surface. And the cool thing is you can actually parameterize this surface as a parametric surface. So if you think of this as the z-axis popping, popping up, again, what's popping, then you can easily describe the parametric surface as follows. So x is just x. Let's first of all. And suppose we have the slice at x. So consider the following slice at x. Well, the slice of x, what it is, it is simply a circle, but in, it's a circle, but in the uh, yz direction. So what it is, this is, let's say, y and z. And what this becomes, again, in the profile view, it becomes a circle. But the question is, what radius? So what's the radius of the circle? Well, if you think of this as a center, then the radius is just this y. But what was y? It's just 1 over x. So in fact, this radius here is just 1 over x, which again here is also 1 over x. And then the question is, how would you parameterize circles of a certain radius? Well, just use um, polar coordinates. So what we get here is y equals r cosine theta. So in this case, 1 over x cosine theta. And z is 1 over x sine of theta. Sine of theta. And then putting everything together, we actually have our parametric equation for this surface. Namely, again, there are two variables, x and the angle theta. So rx theta, it's simply x, so x was just x, y is 1 over x cosine of theta, and 1 over x sine of theta, where x was, in this case, between 1 and 2, and theta is between 0 and 2 pi. And in fact, the cool thing is, in this way, you can parameterize any surface of revolution. Namely, if you rotate the graph of f about the x-axis, then you, the parametric equation is just x, f of x cosine of theta, f of x sine of theta. And this ultimately allows us to find, for instance, surfaces of uh, solids of revolution in a less awkward way than was done in calculus. And lastly, an example that is plane boring. So the plane. Uh, so here, let's find the equation of the plane containing 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 1, 1, and 2, 0, 1. And by the way, it makes sense because the plane is a two-dimensional object, so it should be described as a parametric surface. And in order to do that, let's draw our points. Again, so A is 1, 0, minus 1, and then B, again, not up to scale, uh, B is 1, 1, 1, and then C is maybe here, 2, 0, 1. And then um, 
Just as usual for our planes, you first find the vectors connecting the points. So here, let's find the vector AB. AB, which I just write as you know vector A. So vector A, it's simply B minus A. So this point minus this point, which just becomes the vector 1 minus 1, 1 minus 0, and then 1 minus minus 1, which is simply the vector 2, 1, no, sorry, 0, 1, 2. On the other hand, let's find a vector B, so which just connects A and C, okay. which again you just get by C minus A. So this becomes 2 minus 1, okay, so this point minus this point, 0 minus 0, and lastly 1 minus minus 1, which I think becomes in this case um, 1, 0, 2. So you have those two vectors, A was 0, 1, 2, and B was 1, 0, 2. Another question is, how would you get a parametric equation of this um, plane? It's actually not too bad. And by the way, if you've taken linear algebra, this is your bread and butter, if you'd like. Because to find just an arbitrary point of the plane, here's what you do. You start with the point A, so 1, 0, 1, and you just add any multiple of this vector to the right, and any multiple of this vector to the left. So what the parametric equation is, there are two variables at stake here. Let's call it s and t. So then we become s r s t, which is simply as follows. As I said, you start with the point 1, 0, 1. So 1, 0, minus 1, which you write as a vector. Then you add any multiple of the vector a to this, so let's say plus s a, so plus s times 0, 1, 2, and any multiple of the other vector b, so plus t b, so t 1, 0, 2. And then you just add them up and you have a parametric party, so you get again 1 plus 0 s plus t, so 1 plus t, okay. 0 plus 1s plus 0t, so just s, and minus 1 plus 2s plus 2t. Right. And that's it. Here you have your parametric description of this plane, just like before you had parametric descriptions of lines. And so this was a nice introduction on parametric surfaces. Why are they cool? Because once you have these parametric surfaces, it's actually really easy to do calculus on them. Namely, what we'll be able to do is, for instance, find the surface area of a surface, or we'll even be able to integrate on a surface, which is kind of neat, and even find uh, surface integrals of vector fields on that. So if you have a surface and a bunch of arrows, we'll be able to sum up all the arrows. So it's very, very neat. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.